Well, Happy New Year, Trinity Grace Church. Welcome back to your new community. And I'm hoping that uh, this quote-unquote new year of 2021, it's already been a challenging new year, uh, only less than two weeks into it. Um, but despite all the unpredictability of this new year, that you, in the best sense, would have the same hope, the same certain hope, the same certain glorious hope in Jesus Christ. And really, uh, that this same certain glorious hope would also be new, uh, because the, the depths of Christ are unending. To, to mine all the beauty and truths and glory of who our Jesus is is truly unending. So may you discover more of your Savior and Lord uh, as you do faith life together with your new community, as you center uh, that community and that life and your own uh, personal life around Christ and his gospel uh, in the scriptures um, that God has left us. Well, we're continuing on through our series through Matthew, and this past week um, I did my best to answer a question that I think the passage does ask, which is, uh, how do I know I'm a Christ follower? Uh, my hope and prayer uh, is that uh, we would all have this conversation with God. Our, our conversation with God is many fold, many angles, but that this would be a part of our conversation with God. Lord, no matter how old I am, no matter how old you are, your literal age, uh, I rejoice that I'm your child. Uh, may that be true to your heart, uh, to your mind, to your soul uh, for your entire life. And no matter how old you get, that there would be a beautiful decreasing um, of self in a good, healthy sense and an increasing of Jesus in your life. And to realize even if you are uh, 60 years old, 70 years old, or you're a teenager, or, or you're in your 30s and, and in your prime, uh, so they say, uh, that there would be a, a, a gladness to just say, no matter what, I'm still God's child in Christ, and I want to stay there. It's a good place to be. So as you work through today's passage, I, I hope, again, it's a habit of uh, your group there that you reread the passage. And as you do, I just want to uh, provide you a uh, one possible framework um, and, and just organization to uh, chapter 18, verses 1 to uh, 14. And so I hope that you would see with me, uh, first in the first four verses, Jesus speaking of the child of Christ's submission. Okay? So look for that, unpack that, and uh, if this question is helpful, um, I want to leave you this question. What is Jesus' main point in defining a kingdom citizen as childlike? Because Jesus does pretty definitively say, you have to become like this child that he's using as an object lesson if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh, next, I hope you can see the child of Christ's preciousness. Uh, and that's so important and such a beautiful benefit for the disciple of Christ to carry in their hearts and minds every day, every moment, that you are precious to the Father in Christ. And he even fills you with his spirit uh, to prove that. And uh, I saw that in verses 5 to 7 and verses 10 to 14. Uh, verses 5 to 7, you especially see uh, the preciousness of Christ's child uh, because of Christ's protectiveness uh, over, uh, a good protectiveness uh, over his child. Uh, and then, uh, I hope you can see with me in verses 8 to 9 that Christ calls his children to a good fight. Uh, a good fight towards holiness, towards becoming more like Christ in heart and conduct. But um, whether you do this throughout your study or you kind of come back to it at the end, I, I hope that you could read through today's passage with the lens, um, the Christocentric lens, putting Christ at the center, uh, and, and just to reread the passage to see how Jesus actually is the fulfillment of everything he's talking about, okay? 
Um, so again, to, to that end, if it's helpful, here are some questions um, to help discussion. Share how living as a child of God has benefited your faith. I put child in quotes because um, it is first a, a spiritual state. It, it's, it's something about our hearts. Uh, we are flesh and blood children of our flesh and blood um, parents. Um, and, and, and we are more spiritual children of God. But though we are, in the most ultimate sense, literal children of God, um, because you know, the spiritual reality is, is the ultimate reality, um, and so that's why I put it in quotes. Uh, and put that question, uh, just to word it differently, how do you see your identity as Christ's child practically play out in a world that prizes independence and self-sufficiency? Okay, so that's asking that first question just in different words. And uh, I hope that you can help each other uh, identify ways that you can share your own experience of how remembering that you are Christ's child, that you have a Father in heaven, that you're uh, filled with the Holy Spirit who testifies to your heart, that you can cry out, Abba, Father. Um, share with one another how you experience that, okay, and encourage one another to pursue that. Uh, next set of questions, can you identify in your own life where you want to leave childhood and grow up to be an adult independent of God? So this question is uh, aiming to draw out perhaps um, further areas of maturation and sanctification as Christ follower. Because there's certainly still something of our old sinful nature that wants to be independent of God. And so spiritually speaking, metaphorically speaking, we want to leave uh, being a child of God and, and to just grow up and, and just to be independent, to leave the house, so to speak. Uh, and certainly we saw Adam and Eve tempted toward that and fall to that uh, in the garden. Uh, next set of questions, a heart check. Is Jesus' call to be his child and to care for our spiritual siblings from a place of Christ's humility, uh, i.e., we, we really see that come out in Jesus' telling of the parable of the one lost sheep in today's passage. Uh, is that a reality in your heart and in your conduct? Do you see yourself um, thinking of other church members, your spiritual siblings, the fellow children of God, and wanting to extend Christ's compassion and care for them? Uh, the flip side of that, related, uh, a related question, do you ever struggle with feelings of superiority? Uh, last set of questions, how does today's passage renew your worship and wonder of Jesus, your Christ. Okay, so going back to um, what I've encouraged you to do that exercise to read through the passage at one point uh, with just a, a lens of wanting to see Jesus and how he's the fulfillment of everything he's trying to teach his disciples. Um, how does that evoke more uh, worship and wonder of your Jesus? Uh, to put it differently, uh, same question but in different words, how is Jesus' submission to the Father living out of his own preciousness in the Father's eyes and the good fight that Jesus fought, how is all of that of Jesus' life to you? Okay? So all that to say, I hope that it's a part of your conversation with God. Uh, Lord, no matter how old I am, I rejoice that I'm your child. Hope you're encouraged as uh, you go into the text today. God bless you. Bye.